Hi, everybody. Can you hear and see me? Could somebody let me know? Awesome. Okay. Three yeses. Awesome. So it's good to see everybody today. Um, I'm Sophia Cheka. I'm the Systems Change Coordinator at Texas Homeless Network. We are the lead entity for the Texas Balance of State Continuum of Care. I'm going to try to look all over, so um, just bear with me. I'm trying to do something different this time. Um, thank you for joining me today on uh, to go over the first meeting of the toolkit. Uh, we're going to do, so you can see the agenda, um, we're going to do a little introduction, so I'm going to prep you guys about the toolkit, what we're working on in relation to coordinated entry. I'll take you on a tour of the toolkit, and um, then we'll re review meeting material number one. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do, oh, sorry, questions. If you have them, there will be time at the end to ask questions. However, I encourage you as we're going through this to ask questions, and you can do that three ways. So the first way is you can raise your hand. There should be a little, not like in your office because I can't see you, but um, on your widget for GoToWebinar, there should be like a little hand symbol. You click that and it'll raise your hand. Um, and then I can unmute you. There's also the chat or the question function. So I'll be able to see both of those. I actually am seeing everybody, I saw everybody say yes through the question function. So that may be the best place to do that. Um, and then you can also unmute yourself, be brave, unmute yourself, and ask questions. I, I'm sure all of us would appreciate hearing somebody else's voice. So we're going to start off with a poll. There's a couple of them throughout this. So poll number one, has your community designated a facilitator for the systems change process? Can you hear me now? All right. Thanks, Laura. I'm going to leave it open for a few more seconds. Okay, so about, can you guys see this? Yes, you can now. So about 55% of you say yes, that your community has uh, designated somebody as the facilitator for the systems change process, and about 45% of you have said no. So the reason that I started this uh, webinar with this question is because the intended audience of these webinars are the facilitator of the systems change effort in your community. So. These webinars aren't like general education webinars um, where I'm going to talk about the different aspects of coordinated entry. That's actually going to come much later in this process. Um, what we're going to be doing during these webinars is reviewing the toolkit and really providing a venue for you guys to ask questions, provide feedback on the toolkit, that kind of stuff, um, which I may have given away the next poll. So the next poll is... The purpose of this webinar series is to I'm going to leave it open a few more seconds. About 80% of you have voted. Great percentage, more than our general elections. Okay. So 69% of you say to review the systems change toolkit and to receive support. And then 31% of you said to discuss implementing coordinated entry in your community. So the purpose of today's webinar or of these webinars of this series is to review the system change toolkit and to provide you guys really robust support. So 
And the experience that I've had in the last four years in working with communities to implement coordinated entry is that it's truly a job that one person cannot handle. Unfortunately, I can't be in um, every community at one time as much as I would love to, and I would love to be helping you guys lead this process in your communities. That's just not feasible. And so the intention of the toolkit was to provide you guys with the tools necessary to have these conversations about systems change. I'm a hand talker, you're gonna see this happen a lot. Um, there are a lot of toolkits out there right now on how to end homelessness, like Vets at Home has a toolkit. Um, they released one on uh, developing a system to end homelessness among youth. And in, in looking at the, while they're very good toolkits, um, in looking at them, we felt that they stopped a little bit short for communities in the balance of state. So first of all, you guys do planning on a volunteer basis, right? Like most of you have local homeless coalitions that are absolutely volunteer run. And so your capacity to do anything above and beyond um, that meeting or um, like minor things that need to happen outside of it is just not there. Uh, you guys have full-time jobs, you have families, I get it. Um, and so what we wanted to do was provide you with a toolkit that had all the meeting materials and the knowledge there for you so that you can really use it in your community. Um, so the intention of this webinar series is one, to be a learning collaborative. So I don't anticipate past this webinar that I'll be talking a lot during the webinars. Um, I will be going over the meeting materials in the first part, but really what we want this to be is a venue for you guys to ask questions, um, to to like brainstorm with each other, to uh, just to connect with each other. The balance of state is a very large uh, jurisdiction. We cover 215 counties, and so you guys don't get to see each other a lot. And from a rapid rehousing clinic, we had a lot of feedback that it was really great to meet other people doing the same things that had the same questions. And so this is an opportunity to kind of do things differently than we've done in the balance of state. It's also an opportunity to provide, for me to provide you guys coaching, uh, motivation, support. A lot of this is based off of the experience that we had with Randall Webster and Longview and the support we provided him um, to set up the local uh, effort to end veteran homelessness. Uh, what we really try to do is arm Randall with the tools and the knowledge necessary to really lead this process in his own community. And that's really what we should be doing as a balance of state, is really arming local community leaders with information, with knowledge, with tools to be able to carry this, this effort forward in your own communities. We will never be experts in your community as much as you guys are experts in your community. Um, and so we really need to be focusing on like the empowerment of the local leaders and providing support to help you guys achieve the goal, which is to end homelessness, right? That's why we're all here. Um, also, the intention of this webinar series is for you to provide feedback. So if you guys are meeting weekly, um, according to uh, the suggested schedule that I had in uh, the email that I sent out earlier this week, ideally you'll be providing feedback on how the meeting went the week prior this part of the this part of the agenda like kind of flopped or we needed more support in this aspect we got these questions can you answer them for us yes and andrea great question i'm going to get to that in a second um and then ultimately this is a venue for preparing for meetings nice to well i can't see you john but thanks um, oops, sorry y'all. Okay, so um, a great question came in. I actually meant to cover that when I was talking about facilitators. Um, Andrea asked, since almost half of us are not facilitators, how do you have suggestions on how we f find a facilitator in your community? So that is actually outlined in the toolkit. Um, like I said in the email that I sent out earlier this week, it's really up to the community to have these conversations. From the balance of state perspective, we think that at your, having these conversations at the local homeless coalition meeting is the, is the best venue to decide who's the facilitator of this process, who's basically going to be like taking charge and leading us through it. 
Um, it looks different in every community. So it could be a volunteer of your local homeless coalition. It could be staff at your ESG or CO, local ESG or COC funded project. It could be staff at your United Way who has been designated as the community impact coordinator for homeless services. Um, it could be a VISTA. Um, so it's really, you'll notice um, through this process that it takes a lot of community conversation um, and selecting a person to be the ideal facilitator is also going to require community conversation. Um, did that answer your question, Andrea? Awesome. Okay. So, um, I wanted to provide some background for you guys. I feel like there's a lot of confusion. Understandably, there's a lot of gaps. We haven't really been communicating a ton, and so now is that opportunity. Um, we're really focusing on trying to get the materials out for you, hence the uh, occasional instances of being incommunicados. So, on March 15th, Okay, sorry, I'm reading, <laughs> if you see me like, I'm reading, so just so you guys know. Um, so I will get to your question in a second, Daisy. Um, so on March 15th, we released the Systems Change Toolkit, which we're gonna be reviewing today. So what the Systems Change Toolkit is, is again, this um, toolkit to help facilitate the systems change conversations that need to happen in your community to create a really nice foundation for the development of a housing crisis response system of which coordinated entry is only one piece, okay? So that's really what the toolkit is intended to do. It's intended to arm not only your facilitator but also all of your like meeting attendees with the knowledge necessary to do appropriate analysis of the overall system but also your each agency's system internal process. We are currently working on the Texas Balance of State Continuum of Care Coordinated Entry Written Standards. So what those are are HUD mandated it's a HUD mandated document that basically contains the requirements, so the Texas Balance of State Continuum of Care requirements for coordinated entry. So HUD in the 2012 Continuum of Care interim rule said COCs have to develop this coordinated and centralized intake system. And so it is our responsibility to develop the basic requirements for what each individual or local coordinated entry process needs to look like. Does that make sense to everybody? So individually in each of your communities, you will not be developing your own assessment tool. You will not have to develop your own workflow in HMIS. You will not have to necessar necessarily develop the like baseline referral, coordinated and referral process. That is what we will be mandating in the COC written standards. There will be instances where there are holes because we're trying to make this as flexible as possible because every community has different challenges and different strengths. And so there, you will have to, at the local level, develop coordinated entry policy procedures that basically outline how your coordinated entry process works locally. And then lastly, and I, and so, sorry, uh, I don't know if I said this yet. So Cameron and I are working very diligently on that and we hope to have that out within the next two weeks. And so that will inform the actual development of your coordinated entry system. So I have my fertile soil of the system change toolkit and then the coordinated entry written standards is like the tree that's gonna grow out of it. Um, or coordinated entry is that tree. And then lastly, we're, work, we're going to be working on <laughs> Thanks, Mary. We're going to be working on the coordinated entry data manual. So what that's going to do is outline all the requirements for data entry into HMIS. So it's going to look very similar to the 2014, yeah, 2000, HUD's 2014 data manual, which outlines the data standards that COC and ESG funded projects must collect. Um, so it's going to look very similar. It's also going to outline the workload for you. Um, does that all make sense, how these all fit together? Does anybody have any questions about that? Is it a lot clearer than maybe it was before? I will let you guys know if somebody types something in. Um, so Daisy asked a little bit ago what I was reading when I was 
Okay, it's clear. Thank you, Andrea. Um, so you're mentioning the email you sent earlier this week. Who might be receiving these emails? Is this sent to specific people? So the email I sent the, earlier this week went to local homeless coalition chairs and ESG and or COC funded agencies in your community. So we did that because um, on Monday when I checked registration, there were only 19 people and we were a little concerned that there wasn't more representation. However, I don't think I have my email opened. Um, I, anyway, I don't need to show you guys the email, but I will be sending out coordinated entry news through the, uh, through our constant contact, and I will be sending out to pretty much every listserv that we have, um, besides like conference attendees, so anything BOS related, I'll be sending that out. I highly encourage you guys to read those when I send them out because it contains a lot of very important information, like these webinars, like the toolkit, like the HUD webinars on coordinated entry on the new standards. So I highly encourage you guys to read those when they come in. If you are unsure if you are on a listserv, you can email me and say, hey, Soph, Sophia, I call myself Soph, hey, Sophia, can you check if I have registered for any of your newsletters? And then I can let you know. We actually had somebody who did that after the COC general meeting. Um, something I forgot to say about the System Change Toolkit. My mom called me on Easter and said, hija, daughter in Spanish, I'm planning a really important meeting right now, and I was looking for facilitation resources, and I like looked at your toolkit, and it was really helpful. So I want you guys to know it's mom approved. My mom is my role model and idol, and uh, if it's my mom approved, it, it means it's high caliber. Um, <laughs> okay, so the foundation of the toolkit, just so you guys understand. Um, so the toolkit is based off of my four years or almost four years on this job. All the, you guys know I do a lot of research. I listen to a lot of webinars. Um, I'm, I'm looking at Twitter for like what other communities are doing about this kind of stuff. Um, I read Google alerts. Like it, so it's basically my experience over the course of the almost last four years and all the research I've done um, in terms of what it means to end homelessness, yeah, basically I don't sleep. Uh, but um, what it means to end homelessness, collective impact, design thinking, continuous improvement, like it all applies. Um, I spoke for, uh, I spoke at a friend's nonprofit management class last week and basically told her that, or her class, that I think that HUD's really trying to get nonprofits to infuse more, nonprofits, but also the system, right? Your housing crisis response system to infuse more business practices into what you do, like beta testing, like using data. Um, and so this is not gonna go away, y'all. It's it's gonna continue. Um, we're starting to see in the NOFA that it's gonna depend more not on project type, but more on your performance. So data is gonna become increasingly more important. So back to my main point. Um, so the foundation of the toolkit is the foundation of the toolkit is this idea of continuous improvement. So this um, was developed in, I believe, the 1940s, 1950s. I can't remember the guy's name. Um, but basically, it's this continuous process that you need to engage in, either as an agency or as a system. And so the first step of that is plan. So you need to write what is the issue that we're trying to attack. So for us on this webinar, our goal is to end homelessness. It's as simple as that, right? Um, what, so what is our goal? And then how do we wanna carry out that process, right? So what is, it's, it really requires a lot of like education and informing of people involved in this process. The next step is do. So what they say is identify what your issue is, um, create a plan, and then carry out your plan. So this is very much kind of like beta testing. Businesses do it all the time. They come up with an idea and they test it and they test it and they test it, constantly doing trial and error to make sure that they're developing a tool that's usable by um, their constituents, right? And so the do piece is like, I come, like, basically like piloting the process. 
I'm right, this is how we want to attack this issue, and now we're going to pilot this process and see like what effect it has on this issue. Um, and then the next step is to study it. So once I've implemented for a certain amount of time, I'm then going to use data to inform um, how I move next, right? So I'm going to look at data to see, did it have an impact? Like, did this change idea that I implemented or that we implemented have an impact on ending homelessness? And then the next step, so, sorry, you're going to get, gather that data, you're going to study it, and from that data, you're going to determine what things worked well and what things maybe didn't work so well that you need to tweak. So you probably want to continue the things that worked really well and then tweak the things that didn't, and then you're going to do it all over again. So this whole process is based entirely on continuous improvement. The communities that we've seen that, have, that are running a pretty self-sufficient coordinated entry system are those that do this process. Um, I've also taken this based off of um, the zero to 2016 uh, community solutions model, which they have two-day action camps, and they very much instill this kind of um, continuous improvement thinking in people participating in those camps. So we're trying to really get you guys to constantly be questioning what you're doing, what your system's doing, and trying to change it. Um, okay, next piece. Okay, third poll. Have you reviewed the toolkit prior to this webinar? Okay, a few more seconds. Again, really good turnout. Okay, so I can share this. So 59% of you said no, 41% of you said yes. It's okay, because <laughs> we're going to go over them. However, I highly encourage you guys to at least review the toolkit overview, which I'll be going over in a second. Um, I also want to let you guys know to not necessarily print everything out in mass ahead of time. I'm actually going to be going through every week and making sure that information is as up to date as possible. So even since I released this, there have been um, more materials released, and so we want to make sure that everything that you're sharing is up to is as up to date as possible. So keep that in mind. Don't print everything out right away. You can just as we go through it. Keep in mind that things may change. And probably will change. Okay, so we're going to go through the toolkit. I'm going to send you guys the link. So we put this in Google Drive because it is a pretty substantial document, but also because, can everybody see this? Um, also because it's really easy for me to update it. So if you guys can let me know if you guys can let me know when you're looking at the toolkit, when you're just looking at the file, can you guys see it from my view? Yeah. So if you open it, let me know. You don't have to because we're going to be going through it. But when I was an HMIS trainer, I found that people retain stuff more when we actually like went through the workflow, when I trained them and then they did it. Um, I'm going to give a few more seconds. Okay, so this is, when I say toolkit, like I'm referring to this whole thing, okay? So the first piece that we're going to go through is the toolkit overview. What this document does is explain why we're doing this. So we're ending homelessness. Ending homelessness means developing a housing crisis response system. So it, provi it provides you with that why, that background, which is really essential. Um, what I've learned pretty loud and clear through my four years here is um, how you package this is pretty critical. And so we've really changed that 
I would say in like the last two, two and a half years. Um, if you guys haven't checked out the USICH blog post from a couple of weeks ago, it was all about how to message ending homelessness. I highly recommend it. It's very, every time I see stuff that's like in line with things that we've written, it's very exciting for me. So I highly encourage you guys to check that out. Um, so it provides an introduction, right? Homelessness is a complex social problem. It requires all of us to be involved in ending it. So um, the message that we've changed from first implementing is that you guys have to do this because you're COC and ESG funded, um, when really it's um, ending homelessness is better for everybody, especially people living on the streets. And it takes everybody in the community, not just the COC and ESG funded projects to end homelessness. Um, it talks about a housing crisis response system, how you need to uh, shift strategies. I'm not going to give you guys time to read this because you can read it outside on your own. Um, yeah, so that's, that's the introduction. Um, the next piece is talking about this toolkit in general, so why we developed it. Again, um, we have a lot of communities that we need to implement in, um, and what we found, again, from our implementation attempts before was that it, it just wasn't sustainable and it wasn't working. Um, and so what we really need to do is arm community leaders with the education and tools necessary to push this forward. So um, it provides a little bit more information about where we're doing this and how we developed it. Um, and, then it and then it outlines how to use the toolkit. So this piece is very important. I want you guys to keep in mind that you do not have to follow everything that's in here. It's intended to be very flexible. Flexible is uh, a word that we're seeing a lot more from HUD. Uh, we see it in terms of coordinated entry a lot more. And the intention is that um, the toolkit is very flexible. You guys can, it's intended to be like a baseline, right? Like these are things at least that you should cover. You can decide to cover more. You can decide to cover less. It's really up to you guys. You are driving this train. Um, so again, it's broken down into five parts. One, we address leadership. So that's going back to, I think, Andrea's question about the facilitator. So making sure that you have somebody, a community leader, a facilitator who's guiding you all through this process, making sure that you have leaders involved in these conversations. That's another thing that we found was really detrimental to, effect, uh, to attempts to implement coordinated entry is ultimately we did not have the right people at the table. Um, you need senior leadership involved and you need them to be bought into this process or else nothing will change. And I think a lot of the communities that we piloted coordinated entry with will probably agree with me. Um, the next step is plan. So plan outlines all the meetings um, do. Um, so once you guys finish all the meetings, what's going to happen is you're going to roll over into a 100-day challenge. So this is based off of what 0-2016 to 2016 does, 100,000 homes, which arguably have both been very successful. We have ended veteran homelessness in like 30-something communities in two or three states. So what they're doing is working. Um, and also efforts to end youth homelessness are also doing the 100-day challenge through Rapid Results Institute. So basically you guys will be piloting whatever change uh, statements, and we'll talk about this much later in this process, you guys identify um, in order to move forward in ending homelessness. Um, the next piece is evaluating the outcomes of your 100-day challenge. It'll be somewhat uh, relatively easy because we'll be providing a lot of the data, uh, the data standards or the um, performance measures, there you go, that you need to use for that process. And then ACT is basically deciding to do it all over again. So just so you guys know, this is going to be a pretty rigorous planning session, right? It's eight weeks. Um, it's really in-depth. It's really encouraging you guys to have those difficult conversations that I think a lot of communities need to have. Um, you may not necessarily need to have as robust a planning session next time around. Hopefully that makes sense. So it is an iterative process, but the amount of effort doesn't necessarily need to be the same every time. Um, okay, so leadership, we encourage you to analyze your uh, existing decision-making structures, making sure that, 
And what I mean by that is basically if you have 14 groups that are working on ending homelessness, we encourage you to get them all to one table uh, because you need all your efforts together. Um, but also there really needs to be an entity in your community that's focusing on like strategy, not necessarily resource sharing. Yeah. Um, so Courtney, um, who's from Denton, who is probably further along in this process than any community we've been working with, says, planning meetings ahead of time and clearly articulating goals of each meeting at the start has been very helpful for us. So again, this is why we're doing these webinars, these learning communities. Thank you, Courtney. I need to stop with the, I feel like uh, the TV show with Courtney Cox. Um, so yeah, so analyze your existing structure. <laughs> <laughs> Analyze your existing structure. So ideally your entities are being very strategic about homelessness. Um, resource sharing is good, but it's not ending homelessness. So whether it's your LHC, whether you develop a new entity, what have you, you guys need to have these conversations about how as a community you could be more strategic about addressing this issue. Um, the next piece is engaging leaders and experts. So making sure that you have everybody at the table. Homelessness, again, there's a lot of actors involved, like hospitals, criminal justice system, education. Like making sure that you have everybody in their different areas of expertise at the table is pretty critical. Um, also pretty critical is making sure that you involve consumers, right? Um, trying to create a, or creating a space for people with lived experience to share that experience and to help inform decision making, I think could ultimately really benefit you guys. Um, so with the plan uh, planning section, it provides an overview. So I think that this section will be particularly helpful for the facilitators as you go through to share the goals of the meetings and the purposes of the meetings, because basically what it does is it outlines that. Uh, so you'll see like meeting one, laying the foundation, the purpose of that is to do this and the goal is this. Um, and I do that for, or this does that for all eight meetings. Um, the do section is really you guys doing your 100 day challenge. So in the last, the meeting seven and eight, you'll be identifying what impact you want to have and what are those things that you want to change uh, in order to affect your goal. Um, and so, and you'll also be identifying a date for when you want to start that process. And so the do step is really like actually doing that, like carrying forward with that. And again, a lot of this is based off of um, what I've been seeing coming out of like community solutions and the efforts to end youth homelessness. Study is analyzing it. We'll be here for you. We have a new data coordinator. She'll be working with you. I'll be working with you. And then the last piece is act. So doing it all over again. Does anybody have any questions about that? It's there for you. I need to remember to slow down. Hopefully I'm not going too fast. It's there for you if you want to read it. I highly encourage that you do. Um, also what you'll find in the toolkit are a series of folders. So the one my mom found helpful <laughs> was this facilitation one. So I have compiled Basically, I think the best resources in terms of how to facilitate meetings, which I highly encourage, if you don't read anything else in this, I highly encourage that you read this one, Facilitation for Community Change. It's top notch. Um, but there's also other guidance as to like how to set up your meeting room structure. I heard from Longview that uh, their meetings became much more effective when they sat like community table style rather than like classroom style. So there's a lot, facilitation really is an art and you need somebody who can really put a lot of thought into how they want to carry it out. Um, the next piece is leadership. This just provides some resources from, um, Oh, I'm going to forget the name. Let's open this one. Uh, Homeless Hub in Canada, also a great resource. I highly recommend them. Um, but it involves, it includes resources on how to include people with lived experience. It includes this piece uh, from USICH, which I thought was really good. And then it involves a case study actually from Denton. So you guys can get an idea. And I'll be populating more case studies as we figure out the leadership structures for this process in more communities. Um, so I highly encourage you guys to check them out to get ideas. 
And if I reach out to you to write a case study, don't be surprised. Um, now this is, I think, for the facilitators, the most important piece of this whole thing. Um, you'll notice each meeting is in its own folder. Um, so all you have to do if I'm doing meeting one is click on meeting one and all your resources are there for you. So we're going to go through this. Uh, I'm not going to go through every, obviously, because that's what these webinars are for. So the agenda. Wrong one. So there are three agendas here. There is a facilitator's agenda, which is for the facilitator, and it includes kind of notes and stuff so that while you're facilitating the process, you have a guide for you. Um, it has more robust information than just the bare bones agenda. There's also meeting notes. So this one provides the agenda and provides a space for notes. Um, I highly encourage you guys to find somebody uh, within the attendees of the meeting to take notes. Um, and then you have the regular agenda. Again, you guys don't have to use this. I'm sure all of you have your own agenda templates. You can just copy and paste whatever you need from this and put it on your own template. We're just putting it there to put it there. So what you'll notice here, I'm a stickler for starting on time. You may have noticed I said 2 o'clock, we're starting. I highly encourage you guys to set that tone as well. I know it's hard. Um, but I highly encourage you guys to set that expectation. Uh, not a requirement, it's an expectation. So uh, what I like to build in is 10 minutes of social time, so trying to encourage people to come early and if they need to talk to do it then. Uh, we'll start at whatever time we're starting. Um, doing welcomes and introductions, obviously, and I think in most of your communities you're all gonna know everybody, but sometimes new people do show up. So welcome and introductions, an activity, um, you're going to discuss this process, so like ultimately eight weeks, what are we doing, why are we meeting, why is it important, and what's going to happen at the end of it. You're going to talk about qualitative assessment tools, which I'll show you guys what those are in a little bit, and then you'll wrap up the meeting. So every meeting should last between an hour, an hour, and 15 minutes. It really obviously depends on the room. Um, so this meeting is pretty, is the lighter, is the lightest of all of them. It's the... Uh, Caitlin, our COC programs coordinator, likes to say it's the syllabus day, right? Like we're just covering the basics. Um, so what I have built, well, what we built in here ultimately is this fun activity called the Marshmallow Challenge. So um, has anybody done the Marshmallow Challenge? I want to let people respond. No. Okay. Awesome. So the reason why I put this in here is because, <laughs> well, uh, so the reason why I put this in here is because uh, pretty much like a week after I started, we did a hundred thousand homes boot camp in Georgetown. Mary, Eric, and myself went, and they started it out with us doing the marshmallow challenge which i think really set the tone for what the intended process is supposed to be and like how we're supposed to critically think about things and since i i don't know if you guys do a lot of fun things in your lhc meetings or whatever entity is going to be taking this over um it's just a fun way to kind of like diffuse everything and to like it's just a fun team building thing right so what the marshmallow challenge is, is everybody gets marshmallow, and it's all outlined here, you'll notice on the toolkit, all the resources you need to run this is, is here. Um, but the, tool, uh, the marshmallow challenge is you basically get raw noodles, spaghetti, and a marshmallow, and masking tape, and I think some string. And you divide everybody up into teams, and then they, you tell them, okay, you guys have to build the largest structure in the room. And then you let them go. I think it's like 15, 10 to 15 minute, minutes maybe. You let that time pass. Uh, then you determine which team has the highest one. And then you debrief on it, right? So there are a lot of questions in here. Um, this comes from a really well-known TED Talk. And does anybody, so they tested the Marshmallow Challenge with like different groups of people. Can anybody guess who created the highest structure out of all the groups? Like what, like moms or I don't know, just child, Andrea. So children, so, so kindergartners did the best job. So 
And why they did the best job is because adults, we've learned a lot in our lifetimes, right? And so we apply a lot of our learning into creating the structures, whereas what children do is they hold the marshmallow the whole time and they're constantly doing trial and error. So when they build something, they, put, they test the marshmallow. Um, and so the moral, basically, of this activity is, one, we always need to keep our marshmallow in, in, in mind when we're developing anything, be it a program, be it our system. So our marshmallow for what we do are people experiencing homelessness. The second piece is we really want to create these structures of trial and error where it's okay to try things, it's okay to fail, as long as you're learning from them and you're trying to do it better. <laughs> Courtney just had a hashtag, hashtag what's your marshmallow. So that's, that's why we suggested that you do the marshmallow challenge. You guys can do it. You cannot do it. It's up to you. I highly encourage you to do it. I thought it was a really great takeaway from that whole process. It's really probably the biggest thing that I remember. And it was also really fun. Um, so the first step is doing the marshmallow challenge. Then what you'll do is you'll talk about the process. So right we're going to, the goal, we want you, we want to meet over the course of eight weeks. There's um, attendees responsibilities here. So this will go in line with this section, right? So basically what you'll be saying is, I need you guys, we need you guys to participate in these conversations. It's going to be the course over eight weeks, or if you guys do it by week, whatever your community decides, but we need active participation. We need you to make sure that you're sending leadership to these meetings because we need people who can make the change in an instant. Um, so all, you're basically going to describe the process, right? Like you can even go through and describe like th maybe not in detail about each meeting, but like overarching, this is what our intended goal is, and this is how we're going to do it. Um, and then lastly, you're going to you're going to close it basically with going over the qualitative assessment tools. So you've heard me say, I mean, if you guys have heard me talk before, I don't think I go one one presentation without saying the word data or data informed. Um, so we're going to ask you to be data informed. So the qualitative assessment tools, again, available in their own folder, were developed by org code. I know or code's controversial, but it's a really good tool, or code and National Alliance to End Homelessness. And uh, the tools are intended uh, for, I think, three or four populations. So the first is for consumers. The second is for community leaders and executive directors. So this would be like your mayor, your police chief, your fire captain chief. Um, I don't know what that person's called. Uh, like maybe hospital administrators, um, people involved, like executive directors of homeless uh, or agencies that disperse homelessness assistance um, or housing. So um, community leaders, executive directors. This one is intended for direct service providers. So those are people who work directly with people experiencing homelessness. So that would be like your frontline staff or your volunteers like PATH and Tyler. They have community case management. So it'd be interesting to hear from them. And then lastly, this will assist you guys in the analysis. I'll also be able to help in that. Um, but basically what you're going to be doing is you're going to be providing several weeks. And this is all outlined in the facilitator's agenda. You're going to be out outlining several weeks. Um, I believe, I think it's meeting five or six that you'll actually go over the qualitative assessments. So um, there will be the reminder in the facilitator's agenda to remind the group to make sure that they're getting their assessments filled out. Um, why? we think it's a good idea to have you guys do this is these tools were created with the intention of evaluating your entire system. They're, they're somewhat longish, but I think the data that you get from them can be pretty enlightening. Um, I went to an NEH session, I think in 2014, where a woman engaged in a year of agitation and she used um, the, she used these surveys. She used um, like focus groups. She used tours to basically show people that like what I thought about how the system was working for people is not what is actually happening. So, highly encourage you guys to do this. 
Um, I think that's all the meeting materials. I also included something about meeting rules. We actually do that at our own agency. We use the four agreements. Um, I'll inc would anybody be interested in me including that in here as well? I'll just include it to include it. Um, but it's basically, right, you're, this meeting is where you're setting the tone for how we're going to move forward in this process. We need everybody to be engaged. We need everybody to be prepared. Um, we need everybody to respect each other. I know sometimes that's hard from what I've seen a lot of meetings I've been to, but I think you just need to set that expectation. Um, that's, yeah, that's about it. Does anybody have any questions? It's okay if you don't, but <laughs> I just want to provide an opportunity for you to ask questions. That's the intention of these webinars is to provide another way for to be available to you guys. Okay, so Michelle, nothing at this time. Do you guys feel like this is something that you can utilize in your communities? C, okay, John Cooper. <laughs> Yes, Alexa. No problem, Alexa. Thank you. Okay. So I'm here for whatever. Um, really how we're moving from here on out with this process, with systems change, which coordinated entry is that vehicle, right, um, for having you guys have these conversations. I am available however you need me um, via email. I FaceTime. If you have an iPhone, I FaceTime. Um, I... I am here to support you guys. So we are partners in this process, but you guys are ultimately going to be the leaders of this process. Um, when we were working with Randall, I like to I like to think of it as like being his chief of staff. So like we really help just support him in everything, including writing agendas as you guys see, to like providing that background knowledge, to presenting when he asked us to. So again, you guys are very much going to steer the bus on this, the train, the boat whatever vehicle you want it to be, um, but ultimately, right, I'm here for you, and that's the thing I want you guys to always remember. No, no question is a stupid question, and I am here to provide whatever resource, do whatever research, anything you guys need. Um, last opportunity for questions, that's it for this webinar. Um, we'll be meeting again, same day of the week, Thursday at 2.30 next week. We'll be going over meeting materials number two. Um, I actually have one more poll, which I surprisingly just remembered. Um, I'm curious as to whether or not you guys have decided uh, what your meeting schedule is going to be for the systems change process. So Daisy asks a really excellent question. Um, if these webinars are weekly, is it intended to have our, our weekly meetings within our communities now? Um, so it's really up to you guys. So in the email I sent out, which you may or may not have gotten, Daisy, um, we encourage that you guys meet weekly. So the intention is, right, we go, we went over the webinar, or sorry, we went over meeting number one this week. So our thought was by next, like next week, you guys would be having meeting number one. However, we know that is not going to happen in every community. Um, for those of you that are meeting weekly, you'll you'll be set up. Once you finish this analysis, once you do your 100-day challenge, your coordinated entry system should be set up by September or October. So you're good to go. The deadline for implementing coordinated entry is in January. If you meet monthly, it's a little concerning. Uh, you guys may need to assign more time to your meetings to cover maybe several weeks of meeting materials. Um, it's really up to you guys, right? We have a recommendation, but it's really up to like the capacity that you have in your community. That was a long way of answering that question. I hope it was very clear that, again, that is flexible and entirely up to you guys. So polls, majority of people TBD. I get it. It's okay. 
Um, about 14% of you are meeting weekly and about 19% of you are meeting monthly. So that's good for us to have an idea. As you guys figure this out, uh, please let me know so that I know basically how to schedule my weeks, especially if I need to provide more support one week over another. Um, other than that, um, you have the toolkit. I encourage you to look over it. I'll be probably updating materials every Tuesday or Wednesday. So next week prior to our meeting on Thursday, I'll have updated meeting uh, number two by Wednesday, close of business. Um, so if you want to print anything out, I would wait until Wednesday or Thursday morning. That's about it. Any questions? Anything I can do differently next time? Anything. Feedback, always encourage. I know I tell you guys that all the time. It's all good. Okay. Okay, so thank you, Daisy. I really, <laughs> it was like a month and a half of work. Uh, uh, Daisy says awesome toolkit materials. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to next week, especially for those of you who may be meeting next week on meeting number one. I'm, I'm excited to hear your feedback on that, what worked well, what didn't work, what you would suggest changing, but also going over meeting material number two. And we'll do the same process every time. I'll do webcam. Um, assuming that I remember we have the webinar that day and I look presentable, I always do. But <laughs> um, Any last minute questions before I end this webinar? Okay, I don't see anything rolling in. Thank you guys so much for your time. Thank you so much for everything that you do in your communities. Um, homelessness couldn't be ended without you guys. So, yeah, thank you. Uh, I will see you all next week.